As Hunter Biden's banking records reach the Senate floor this week, some are saying the president's son may have broken a number of laws. We take a closer look. Shanghai is extending lockdown orders. Phase one is still going strong, despite passing its deadline. And phase two is now underway. A new death hit Shanghai after ambulance staff refused to treat a dying patient. The case follows another similar death due to denied medical care. And for those watching our full episode, is the U.S. changing its China strategy? Washington's top trade representative says it's time for the U.S. to take action. And a new world order under Beijing and Moscow. Russia's foreign minister details plans for the future, and China responds. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Banking transactions between Hunter Biden and Chinese Communist Party linked companies were unveiled this week. Is the investigation into the president's son heating up? NTD's Jason Perry has the story. This week, Senator Chuck Grassley and Senator Ron Johnson presented newly released banking records on the Senate floor, which show specific million dollar transactions made from CEFC China Energy to Hunter Biden. CEFC China Energy, like many other large companies in China, had a Chinese Communist Party sale within the company. After the newly released banking transactions were made public, major news outlets such as CBS, ABC and CNN are reporting with unnamed sources that the investigation of Hunter Biden is expanding to see if he violated money laundering, tax and foreign lobbying laws. We have been unable to verify the claim that the investigation of Hunter Biden is intensifying. We also reached out to the Justice Department for comment, but we didn't hear back before airtime. Earlier this week, Senator Ron Johnson spoke in front of a recently uncovered million dollar wire transfer between a Chinese Communist Party linked company and Hunter Biden. Johnson keyed in on part of an audio clip that was extracted from Hunter Biden's laptop, in which Hunter referred to Patrick Ho, his former business partner. In 2019, Hunter Biden's former business partner, Patrick Ho, was arrested and sentenced to three years in prison for his role in a multi-million dollar scheme to bribe top officials in Uganda and Chad in exchange for business advantages for CEFC China Energy. Jason Perry, NTD News. Hunter Biden is still being investigated by the Department of Justice and so far has not been charged with any crimes. President Biden is not part of this federal investigation. Next, a look at a now defunct Chinese giant, CEFC China Energy. It had been one of the country's largest companies before it declared bankruptcy in 2020 under Beijing's clampdown on domestic industries. The conglomerate did global business in oil and offered financial services and made the Fortune Global 500 list at the time. Its founder and chairman, Ye Jianming, was once touted by the media as the Chinese Rockefeller. CEFC China Energy was private in name, but hired numerous high-ranking former officials from the Chinese military and Hong Kong as executives. The company was deeply involved in Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative. Its CEO once admitted on a 2018 Chinese TV show that the company's overseas businesses serve the Chinese regime's strategic goals. Although we are a private company, we still need to closely follow the government's policies and serve the state's strategic interest. CEFC seizes the opportunity of the Belt and Road Initiative, serves the country's strategy, and takes it as our own responsibility. In the past few years, CEFC China Energy has made some really good strategic layouts in Middle Asia and the Middle East. All of these layouts are to serve the government's strategy, to guarantee national energy supply and national security. In that interview, the company's CEO said the company bought a 14 percent stake in Russia's state oil giant in 2017. That stake came in third, with only the Russian government and a U.K.-based company holding more control of the Russian giant. CEFC Chairman Ye fell out of favor with Chinese authorities in 2018. He was charged with embezzlement, and the company shut down two years later. He since disappeared from the public eye. Shanghai appears to be extending its outbreak-driven lockdown. The entire city and its 26 million residents are now under orders to stay home, starting Friday. 
The update comes in contrast to authorities' original orders. They outlined a two-phase lockdown policy last weekend that would see only one half of the city closed at a time. Residents and businesses in the eastern half would shutter from Monday, March 28th to Friday, April 1st. Those in the western half would stay home after the east reopened, starting Friday. During this time, two rounds of mandatory virus testing would also be carried out. But the deadline for Phase 1's reopening is here, and the eastern part of the city is still closed. On top of that, the western side declared Friday it would go ahead with lockdown anyway. One day before, local authorities issued a notice saying the eastern side would remain shuttered for another 11 days, adding that the area would be divided into cells in a grid pattern. If a single positive COVID-19 test appears in a given cell, all neighborhoods, companies and public places in that cell will be closed until April 11th. While other cells with no positive cases must remain under complete lockdown until next Monday, followed by another seven days of what authorities called community health management. Residents under community health management are instructed to follow rules similar to a full lockdown, like only going out to buy essentials, wearing face masks, avoiding contact with others, and not taking public transportation. Another death in Shanghai amid strict lockdown orders. Footage of the scene shows a cardiac arrest patient's daughter begging an ambulance for help, but to no avail. Can you help him? Are you going to die if you help him? He's not breathing and his heart has stopped beating. Can you hurry up? You can go contact hospital leaders. We have no way out. We've got other jobs at hand. He's not breathing and his heart has stopped beating. Why don't you lend us your AED? You won't die for it. He has no heartbeat now. AED is a device used to revive patients in the middle of cardiac arrest. If we lend you the AED, what about the next patient? After several rounds of back and forth, the first responders still refuse to take in the dying patient. Why are you so inflexible? We've caught the police, but they haven't arrived. Soon, the ambulance left. In a social media post, the patient's daughter said they wanted to rush her father to the hospital, but were forbidden from leaving their own residential compound because of lockdown orders. She's one of the 26 million Shanghai residents under stay-at-home orders. Authorities have banned most residents from leaving their homes following a wave of rising virus cases. The patient's daughter later wrote online that she begged police officers for help, but they told her they couldn't send her father to the hospital. Her father died 40 minutes later. The tragedy is taking Chinese internet users by storm. Footage of the scene racked up over 6 million views. One user commented that he was angered by the situation, but added there's nothing he can do about it. The original footage has been scrubbed from the Chinese social media. In a comment alluding to this, another internet user said, All of us have seen this video. Deleting the post won't delete our memories. Please cherish yourself. Shanghai authorities later published a statement apologizing to the patient's daughter. This tragedy is not a standalone case. A week earlier, a Shanghai nurse died of an asthma attack. That's after local hospitals closed emergency services under lockdown policy. Multiple hospitals refused to treat the nurse, including the one she worked for. The trial of Australian journalist Chen Lei has just ended in Beijing in near secrecy. The Australian ambassador to China said even he was denied entry to the court proceedings. A Beijing court has concluded the trial of Cheng Lei, a Chinese-born Australian journalist, with a deferred verdict. Prior to the trial, court officials barred Australian Ambassador Graham Fletcher from observing the proceedings. Well, um, as you've seen, we've just been denied entry into the trial. Um, this is deeply uh, concerning, unsatisfactory and regrettable. Um, we can have no confidence in the validity of a process uh, which is conducted in secret. Fletcher said they will continue to advocate for Chung's rights and interests. According to Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Wang Wanbin, Chung allegedly provided state secrets overseas, and he urged Australia to, quote, respect China's judicial sovereignty. 
but the regime didn't offer any details about the offenses Chung is accused of committing. We have no information about the charges or allegations against Ms. Chung. And no, we just don't have any information on that. And that, that, is, that is part of the reason why we're so concerned, because we have no uh, basis on which to, um, to understand why she's being detained. Chung Lei worked as a TV anchor for Chinese state media for 10 years. In August 2020, she was detained amid tense relations between Canberra and Beijing. Australia has voiced concerns about a lack of transparency over the case. Chung's family is also convinced of her innocence. Chung is the second Chinese-Australian held by Chinese authorities since 2019. Australia has warned its citizens of the risk of traveling to mainland China, noting that the Chinese regime has detained foreigners on vague charges of endangering national security. Chen's detention in 2020 followed a sharp downturn in diplomatic relations between Beijing and Canberra. That's not long after Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison called for an investigation into the origins of the CCP virus, the infection that causes COVID-19. Shortly after Chung's arrest, two Australian media correspondents in China fled the country following counselor advice. Chung isn't the only Australian accused of disclosing state secrets by Beijing. Another China-born Australian citizen, writer Yang Hunjun, has also been in detention in China for three years. The man denies the espionage charges and now is said to be in ill health. And that's all for today's China In Focus on YouTube. We are now sharing a shortened version of our program on YouTube. That's after being demonetized for a year. Full episodes can be watched on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up for a 14-day free trial, please click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you tomorrow. Every once in a while, something comes along so masterful, it leaves you in awe. So inspiring, it changes your life. So beautiful you wish it would never end. When that happens, it's something not to be missed. Shen Yun, an all new production every year. The performance was enchanting. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. It touches you. It really does. The expertise of the dancers was really, really strong. To know that it was live music was really fantastic. We didn't want to miss this. Make sure you see it. Have to come. Life-changing.